My name is Ashin Tanzi. I'm one of the lecturers in the War Studies Department here at King's. So first of all, I'll say a little bit about the Department of War Studies, who we are. The Department of War Studies is really the only university department in the world devoted to the complexities of conflict and security. So this is pretty broadly defined. We cover a really wide range of issues related to war and security. We look at the causes and the conduct and the consequences of war itself. But we don't just examine the military aspects of conflict. We also look at the implications of war for wider politics and society. So the challenges of socio-economic development in war-torn societies, the challenges of diplomacy around conflict, issues of international law and human rights. So we have a very multidisciplinary approach in the departments and we have people who are political scientists, people who are historians, people who are kind of strategic theorists, a very wide range of academics in the department. And we're also interested in the whole array of issues in, inter in international politics aside from conflict and war. So we have <coughs> colleagues and, and modules that you can choose that look at issues of international diplomacy, international law, nationalism in international politics, ethics in international relations. So there are many, there's a very broad spectrum of, of topics that come, with, come uh, within our department. And I want to focus in particular on three aspects of the department that we think make it particularly appealing and unique. So first of all is this idea of knowledge in the service of society. This phrase is in the mission statement of the university and sometimes these mission statements are more rhetoric than actual practice but here we, we really do put this into practice. Uh, we have a whole range of scholars who really get out there and engage with the policy community, who engage with practitioners. We have many staff who have very close connections both with the UK government in the Mil Ministry of Defence or in the Foreign Office, uh, also with the US government and also with a range of think tanks both in London and, and internationally. Some of our staff members have gone and accompanied uh, UK forces and UK uh, officials in Afghanistan, in Iraq, to, to try and study how the UK engages in, in its foreign policy. Uh, we have colleagues who work uh, and advise public bodies on risk assessment in relation to terrorism. So we have a colleague who just got awarded a CBE actually for her work with the government on counterterrorism measures. We have a whole centre for the study of radicalisation, interested in how people, how extremists become extremists. How do, you, how do people become radicalised? And we have a whole centre that really focuses on that and obviously has very close connections with the policy community. As a department, we really go out into the real world and engage with politics and policy and then we bring that back into the classroom. So you're going to be taught by people who not only have ac academic expertise but who have a deep knowledge of how politics actually works in practice. We also serve as this intellectual hub partly because of these close connections that our staff have to government and to, to research institutes around the world, but also because we are in the middle of, of London. And that, that creates this kind of important research hub, hub into which a lot of practitioners, policymakers, politicians, diplomats, they come and they give talks here. I, I was in this room, uh, I heard Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General of the UN, uh, give a talk here a couple of years ago. We've had Leon Panetta, who was the former Secretary of uh, Defence in the US, give his, his major UK speech he gave at King's. Uh, the Chief of the Armed uh, Forces, the UK Chief, was, gave a talk here in the last uh, couple of years. So we get major figures who come through London and they talk at King's and those talks are available to students, you can come. We also really value the, both the quality and the diversity of our student body, the, the last point here, and that makes us who we are. So we really aim to attract the highest quality of students, this degree is a very prestigious degree now. We've increased our tariff in the last couple of years. It is heavily oversubscribed, so I think we get over a thousand applications every year and we have 150 spots. So it's, we're really taking the, the cream of the cream. And it's also a very diverse student body, so if you come here, you should expect maybe at least 30% will be from outside the EU and, and Europe. Every year I give the talk to the incoming first years, and I always ask, show your hand if you're from the UK and around 25% of people show their hands. Can you show your hand if you're from Europe? And maybe another 40% show, and then there's 30% from outside of Europe. And there's always a murmur, because everyone assumes it's going to be majority UK students, and it's not. It's a really international degree in international relations. So you'll be part of this diverse student body. We also have a very good gender balance. The Department of War Studies has two single honours degrees. The BA in War Studies, some of you may have already gone to a talk on the BA in War Studies. I'll talk today about the second single honours degree we have, BA in International Relations, and we also have these joint degrees, where you can have War Studies and History, War Studies and Philosophy, and History and International Relations. But I will talk about 
the BA in International Relations, which is a relatively recent addition to the Department of War Studies. As a department, it's a few, it's a few years old now. When we established it, we really expanded the department to kind of to serve this degree program. So we hired a lot of new staff and the department has expanded partly to meet the needs of this degree program. What is also distinctive about this degree program is that it's interdepartmental. It's interdepartmental. It is housed and, and kind of overseen in the War Studies Department, but it is run with the Department of European and International Studies, the Department of Political Economy, the Department of Middle Eastern Studies, and the, the, we have a whole range of global institutes. We have a Brazil Institute, a China Institute, and an India Institute. And all of those institutes contribute teaching to uh, this degree program. So you will be kind of housed in the Department of War Studies, but you will experience and have the option of taking courses in a very wide range of departments here at King's College. The first year you will do five required modules. So these are the only five you will do, and you have to do them all. So the first is international relations theory. So you'll look at major approaches to understanding the continuity and change in international politics. So we look at what explains patterns of war and peace? What explains the rise of international organizations? How should we think about international organizations? Are they actually important? Or are they just arenas where some of the big powers kind of fight out their fights and they don't actually really add anything else? There are different theoretical approaches to understanding what drives international politics. Some argue that it's really just states are out for their own security interests. Others argue, well, hold on, you know, ideas and norms make a difference. Some states pursue politics based on considerations of morality or, or what, what they feel is appropriate to do, humanitarian concerns rather than con security concerns. So there's a whole kind of set of theoretical approaches to understanding what drives states and other international actors to engage in what they do. And you will get a very solid grounding in that. We have a module then on the history of the international system, which traces international history from the 17th century, uh, the development of the international system of states, you know, how we ended up with a set of sovereign states rather than lots of city-states or empire. Looking at empire, decolonization, the role of revolution, obviously the Cold War, the post-Cold War period, so a big historical sweep of international politics. Then there's a course on introduction to international economics, which is taught from the Department of European and International <coughs> Studies, one of the partner departments. We have a course on conflict and diplomacy, where you look at a range of case studies of, diplomatic, of diplomacy and conflict, such as the Iraq War, the war in Afghanistan, uh, conflict resolution in the Middle East, US-China relations, so you'll kind of get an introduction to some of the biggest conflicts and diplomatic crises or, or relationships of the day. And then we have uh, a module called, uh, oh I skipped one, sorry, I'm reversing them, uh, Contemporary Security Studies, the second from the end. Uh, that is the only module in first year which all, the, all students in war studies take. So you will have, you'll be in the same seminar rooms as a BA in war studies students. It's a shared module and that looks at some of the major uh, issues of concern in contemporary security. Second year we have one required module which is called global politics. It's kind of a, a big sweeping module that looks, tries to look beyond interstate relations, tries to think of global politics as more than just the relations between sovereign states but also looks at a range of non-state actors whether they be international organizations like the EU or the UN or they might be non-state actors such as Amnesty International or ISIS, Al-Qaeda, terrorist organizations that act on the international stage but they are not sovereign states. And how do we think about how these different types of actors, sovereign states, international organizations, terrorist organizations, civil society organizations that cross international boundaries, how do they, how do they affect each other, how do they uh, work together or work at odds with each other, against each other in global politics? And we look at a range of case studies of different types of actors and, and how they try to influence different types of issues. So a lot of the lectures on that module are about particular issues, gender relations in international politics, uh, terrorism in inter international politics, cyber security in international politics. So that's your required module and you take three others from a, an, a list that is at least 15 modules long. So there's a lot of choice in second year. Uh, this is just an illustr illustrative list of potential modules that you might get to choose foreign policy analysis, international political economy, again, these both are uh, taught by partner departments, contemporary international relations theory, human rights and international law, so if you are interested in legal issues and human rights issues, statecraft and diplomacy, so that looks at different types of tools that states have available to engage in diplomacy, ranging from non-violent persuasion to more coercive policies such as sanctions or intervention. 
Uh, and then we have war and conflict, global conflict in the contemporary world, intelligence and war studies, and many, many others. So you have a lot of choice in second year. Then in third year, you have one big project. You have a 10,000 word dissertation, compulsory. You pick one module that is a regional specialism. We have a list of modules, all on different regions, Europe, the Middle East, the Americas, India, South Asia, China, Africa. You pick the region you're interested in, you take one module there, and then you pick two modules, again, from a very long list this time, over 30 optional modules in your third year. You have huge choice in year three. And here are just, again, some examples. Ethics in international relations, the UN and global governance, critical security studies, gendering global, uh, global politics, US foreign policy, uh, Russia in the 21st century, and foreign policy and crisis resolution. These are just some of the illustrative examples of modules that might be, that we have run and that might be available to you by the time you get to third year. Things always change a little bit year from year, but you know, a good illustrative list of, of the types of modules. And as I said, you, you can pick modules not only from war studies, but from other departments in King's College. I just want to point to a few other key features of the degree in the final few minutes. First of all, we have a big emphasis on independent research. So there's a shift from first year, a big shift from first year to third year. First year, we give you every week for, for each module you do, it's kind of a common template. You'll get a lecture like this in a room like this uh, for one hour and you'll have a seminar for one hour. By the time you get to third year, it's much more likely that you're going to be in a, a two hour seminar. We teach you the foundations in the first year, but by the time you're in third year, we want it to be much more student led. You go, you do the reading, you come to a seminar group and you, you battle it out, so to speak, with your fellow students. You engage diplomatically with one another on <laughs> issues of international politics. We put more onus on your, on student-led teaching by the time you get to the third year. We want to see what you bring to the class rather than making sure that you know the basics and you have the foundations. We also have a very diverse set of assessments across the three years and by the end you will have not just done the traditional university essay but uh, you might have had the option of doing, I teach a course that involves a, a strategy report. You advise an international actor on how to promote democracy in a country that you choose. You choose the actor, you choose the country, it's up to you. Much more independent than us telling you right on this question. Some of my colleagues run simulations. So you, you simulate uh, a crisis resolution process, a, a, a diplomatic uh, incident, and you try and work out how to resolve it. And it's an assessment, so you were assessed. Uh, so a, a wide array of assessments. And the dissertation, uh, which I mentioned before, is this big independent project. It starts in the second year. You pick your own dissertation topic that is up to you. So you, by, the, by the middle of the second year, you'll have a sense of what really interests you. And we tell you, go away, think of a topic. Uh, we advise you, so we give you guidance. You'll have a dissertation supervisor. You'll have a series of meetings with the supervisor. And from the, towards the end of your second year, to, to the end of your third year, you will work on this dissertation and you'll submit this 10,000 word document towards the end of the second year. You will have a lot of student staff contact during the three years that you are here. We have a personal tutor system, so when you arrive you are assigned an academic as your personal tutor. So I have lots of personal tutees and if they have a problem, whether it's academic or sometimes students have just personal problems that are affecting their academic life, you can come to me as the first point of contact. I might not be able to help you directly, but I can then point it's as kind of a referral service. So for some academic issues, absolutely, I can help you. For some other issues, I can just tell you where else in the university to go. Uh, so it's a first point of contact, and I, students use it a lot. It's, it's very helpful. You just know that you have somebody who knows you, you know them, and if you're having difficulties or you just have questions, you can go and ask. Every academic has an office hour, usually two hours really, every week during term time. And we post those times and we'll be in our office and you can just come by. I'm always surprised how few students do come by, but we are there. And if you do, if you do want to come and have a conversation, maybe you're struggling, maybe you didn't understand the grade you've got, maybe you just want to know how to do better, or you just want to have a conversation, you just drop in and we're there. And we have a staff student committee. So every year there are student representatives. So this for each program, so the BA in International Relations will have a student rep in first year. One of you could be the student rep in first year when you arrive. It's an elected position. If you're a student rep, you're on the student staff committee. And next year, as it happens, I will be the staff member on the student staff committee. So I would meet all the student reps. So students go to their rep and say, oh, I'm having problems. Uh, or we think this could be better. The rep tells us, and I would then feed it back up into the department. So we have this ongoing dialogue 
so that meets, I think, once every term. I will know more next year. We have a study abroad option. You can study the entire second year abroad. We have a very wide range of international partners. So previous students have gone to the US, to Canada, to Australia, to France, and many, many others. There's a long list of places that you can go. When I gave this talk last year, I mentioned the reduced fees. A couple of parents gasped in excitement. In the second year, you would pay only £1,350 in fees if you go and study abroad. So your fees are greatly reduced. Based on what happened last year, I could see parents just shipping their students <laughs> out of the country. Don't come back. And we have a very dedicated, comprehensive careers service. We have dedicated staff that are work full time in this careers office. Uh, they have a lot of subject knowledge. So again, if you do come here, that first induction talk, we will have, there's always somebody from the careers office who knows international politics and war studies students really well, knows what they want and has tailored advice for students who have your interests. There are internships opportunities, like eight week internships during the summer. There's a, a scheme that will give you or try and line you up with an internship that interests you. We have this, uh, it's a program called the King's Leadership and Professional Skills Award. And that is essentially a program where you can get this official certificate at the end. You, you go to classes, you learn about the careers, you meet employers. It's essentially something to, that tells you, you get to know how the job market works and you get this thing on your CV to say you've done this. And it's, it's a little kind of kite mark. It's a flag that employers might like to see. We have a, the so-called talent bank, which is just a database of college jobs. It's up there on the screen. Anytime somebody on in, within the college system wants to hire a research assistant or just needs a student for a short period of time to help in an event, put, it, put the job on talent bank and students can see it and apply. Uh, so there's kind of an internal job market. And then we have the Career Connect database, which is this external job market. That's for job ads from major national and international employers. Uh, and they can be routed through this. So you see that you might want to be looking for jobs. You can try and look on Career Connect. Thank you very much, and good luck in your studies.